morning, Matt from Oaken Ash Farm here, and it's the end of April. And just give you a little farm update. Pear trees in blossom. We got peach trees in blossom. Apples haven't started yet, but they'll be uh, maybe next week. So we've been up to. Um, put, just add a new bed. This is going to be our pollinator uh, garden and a herb flower garden for Lindsay. And, uh, Something we had referenced before. So she actually has, we're gonna put some posts in here, run a grape trellis across the front. And if you remember, we got our steps going down to the market garden. Plot one, plot two is coming along. Last week we ended up putting in uh, apple, pear, apple, pear, apple. So a few there along the border, that'll, that'll be a productive bed space and, and provide a border and kind of a transition zone from the market garden to the forest to kind of just that bring that tiered story leading up to the forest so let's take a walk through the garden see how it's looking we got Arlo the farm dog out here with us So right through this area, in front of the, the garden shed, we're gonna have a couple raised beds. So we'll get these kind of divvy up this area. We just put in some bed space here. Lindsay put all our potatoes in these beds. And then uh, we're gonna put some perennials down that far right hand side. And if you come over the back here, I know it's been a while since we've, we've kind of done and this was all standing timber before, but we got this staked out now and these are all marked out where we got um, tree crops that are going to go. So like this right here, what do we got? This is a palm grease, which is the apple variety. And then there's a golden russet apple down the far end there. And then these two orange stakes here would be hazelnut, hazelnut. There'll be a wild plum, June berry. I'd have to look at my sheet, hazelnut. But it, 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 what it is, it's a polyculture. And we just kind of are alternating what crops are in between to, to not only provide variety what we have and variety for ourselves and pollinators, beneficial insects, but also by alternating, we're reducing some of the disease and uh, pest pressure because it can't jump from, you know, if this is a monoculture orchard, apple, apple, apple whatever pest can just jump from apple tree to apple tree. Well, by breaking it up, we're able to kind of leave these, whatever's on this apple tree or what's on the hazelnut, we're gonna leave them on their own island. They really can't hop over to the next variety. So we got the uh, one row here, row two, and then we'll have row three down below. And I left, I left this nice oak here because I, I just like it. And it kind of fits into that that uh, canopy story, and it's at the end of the tree row anyway. So we got these here. This will be pasture in between. I got to get these stumps dropped, but then we're gonna do raspberries down the middle of this lane. So what we're ending up with is a 14-foot lane in between the tree row, and then the raspberries and, and blueberries down the middle, and then we'll have another 14-foot row. So what's that gonna allow us to do is as we turn this in the pasture, we'll be able to run our uh, chicken tractors through here and just start improving the soil. Let's say I actually go over here. I, I ripped a rock out and we can see what this forest uh, soil structure looks like. So here where I ripped out a couple, couple of rocks, we can see what this actual forest soil structure is composed of. And what you're seeing is this, we got this hummus layer, humus layer, and then it's just like a, mostly like a clay. So what we're looking to see over time is, you know, after running chickens through here and improving the soil, are we building soil or are we degrading it? And I think we know the answer what, where this is headed. But here's another one over here. This gives you, this is actually probably a little better view here. 
So you got this this rich forest hum humus that's just all roots and decomposed pine needles and leaves and all that, but it's it's thin. It's only about two inches, and then you get into this this clay. Other parts of the property, it's more sandy and uh, gravelly soil, but I mean, it's nice. It's good. No hold water. It's sandy clay, but. Yeah. Isla, what'd you do this morning? Um, really, I ate um, a donut. What did you go pick up this morning? Um, trees. Oh. Blueberries and raspberries. Raspberries. Yeah, and then we have a couple blackberries as well, too. That mom just had to get. Norse Farm, they're a nursery here. They do a lot of commercial production, but uh, curbside pickup, since we're only about a half hour away, and went up and picked up all our stuff. All this just came out of the cooler. It's all frozen. Soil blocks, all these plugs are all frozen still, so, which would be good. We know they're actually dormant, and that'll buy us a couple days, because right now, it's not gonna happen today. And today's Wednesday. We might get these in Friday. We'll see. Friday afternoon, maybe. And these are gonna go in between. These are all for our permaculture orchard. No. Um, so these be in the alley lanes, in, the, in between the tree rows. And I'm still waiting on two other tree orders with some hazelnuts, uh, wild plum, June berries, all those things. But uh, we we'll get all the pears and apples in the other day. So I came out here the other day, we had um, a lot of potatoes. I ordered a lot of potatoes, uh, more than we really had bed space for. So um, I came out here, this is our kitchen garden. And I came out here the other day and um, in the back, you can see, I have some garlic planted, some hard neck garlic. We can't do soft neck here. It's just too cold a climate. So I planted those in October um, and they came up really nicely. My only concern is these beds don't get a ton of light, especially later in the season, but I think we're gonna be okay for uh, the potatoes. So I have all of these beds planted with potatoes um, all the way down the line. And I even planted them in amongst these uh, green onions here that we should be harvesting soon. Once they get a little bit bigger, um, I'll be pulling those out of the ground. So I have some interplanting going on there. But other than that, every single bed in this garden is now filled with potatoes and it still wasn't enough. So I'm gonna show you the next spot that I have for that. Mm -hmm. 